with the with the instruments. Praise you with the timbrel. Praise you with the cymbal. And, and thank you, God, for being able to praise you with these voices that you've given us. Thank God for each of you for your prayers, for your texts that reminded me to rest. <laughs> Which is funny. Anyway. <laughs> but I'm grateful for it. Amen. Sister Twine, can you tell me?
when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. The word of God and the people of God. Praise be to God. Our focus is going to be not on the betrayal, but on the fact that there were all of those people around that table. Those persons that were different. Even one who would deny and one who would betray. But yet they were where? All at the table. In the play and the film version of Beauty and the Beast, amen, there is a delightful song that simply says, be our guest. Be our guest. Put our service to the test. Tie a napkin round your neck, Sherry, and we'll provide the rest. Amen. Amen. And while this is Disney and there is no division in fantasy land, the real truth is that there are places we are not invited to be. Events not thought about, parties where we're not on the list, dinners where our company is not the pleasure, weddings not close enough to merit consideration, places where we are not in the in crowd. And for some of us, it makes us feel some kind of way. And though we stay and try to act as if it doesn't matter, the truth is we feel slighted. We feel uneasy. We sometimes feel looked over. Yet, beloved, there is one thing that we are all invited to. And far too often we take that invitation for granted. We are invited to it so often we know what to say when it's time to partake. We know it by memory. We know each aspect of it and familiarity breeds I don't mean we despise it. I mean we take it for granted. We've been saying it every year of our lives since we can remember, and we just say it by rope, but we don't always think about what we're saying. We know the invitation and the words to the verse attached, but we don't, sometimes we don't even hear ourselves talk. So we take the invite for granted, it is still the best invitation ever. Best because the host, best because of the cuisine, and best because of the guest list that always has your name. No matter who you are and where you come from or what you've done, this very special meal comes with an open invitation, but it has one stipulation. You must RS Responde si Which really just means that you gotta say you're willing to be at the table. In the movie, Tyler Perry, why did I get married? Don't get your class back. There is a scene when they are seated at the table. Mm -hmm. When someone brings up something that caused everybody to stop eating and give the conversation their full attention. Mm -hmm. But we won't get into the pettiness of that discussion, however. That's what happens to Jesus and his disciples. The disciples had been busy serving as ancient day stewards. They found a place for the Passover they, they, that would be known as the Lord's or the Last Supper and prepared it for such. Mm -hmm. But as they were beginning to commemorate the Passover, they realized this was no ordinary celebration. This was not supper as usual. In the midst of the ceremonial meal, Jesus made a proclamation they were not expecting one of you shall betray me. And they said, one of us. Maybe you being one of the Pharisees or the Sadducees, they're the ones who want you dead. Or 
maybe Jesus, you just being a little paranoid. One of us. <laughs> one of us who has been with you, who left everything we have and walking with you for three years. Yeah, yeah. One of us who's been right by your side the whole way. One of us who have gone out of our way to leave our kindred and follow you. One of us. I'm sure these diverse thoughts went through the minds of each disciple as they said, is it I, is it I, is it I? They, they really meant, oh, you don't need me. <laughs> Whenever there are a number of persons in one place at the same time, at a bomb is dropped, one thing is for sure, there will be reactions. And those reactions will not be the same. For that night, the disciples were not homogeneous. They were not the same in their thoughts, in their actions, or in their deeds. They came to that place with their open invitation, just like we do. From diverse environments, diverse experiences, and with diverse expectations. And we'll have diverse reactions. Each of them brought something different to the table. They brought different thoughts and actions to the issue now at hand. And each would handle the events to come differently. We far too often uh, view the 12 as a unit. We see them as a collective now. We say disciples and we mean a group. Like we, we mislabel millennials. Or baby boy. And then they all think the same exact way. And it's how many people often view the church. You hear people say, oh, I'm full with the church. Because of an experience they had with the church. One. Maybe two. But they group us. They clump the church all together as one. No matter a group without personal distinction. But like those of us who will in just a little while approach the table of, this Lord, of the Lord differently, they had an open invitation. They had RSVP. But yet there was still diversity at the table. Diversity at the table, for there was one who would betray, there was one who would deny, there were those who had an agenda, there were those who were absolutely clueless, there were those who were going along and getting along, but there were those who were loyal, there were also those who were rebellious, and those who were stubborn, and those who were faithful. And since no one is Jesus, that includes this chief seller. We all bring something different to the table. Amen. Yet, Jesus loved them unconditionally. He knew Judas would betray him. He told Peter, you will deny me. But he loved him. Individually and collectively. And no matter their issue, no matter what he knew about them, Despite what he knew they were about to do, there was an open invitation to be there. Jesus wants us to remember today that we are all invited to the table. It is an open invitation, but you must RS.
diverse people. They were not all from the same place. They did not all come from the same understanding. They weren't all brought to be disciples the same way. The disciples were very diverse. Each was Jewish, but not all the same kind of Jew. Andrew and Nathaniel, uh, Bartholomew were followers and disciples of John the Baptist. They were, they had an itinerant pastor, and they just stayed at the church. When John left, they stayed with Jesus, because Jesus was dead. Uh, they were not those who were uh, particularly religious, they, they were fishermen. Uh, there were those who were not particularly religious because they were fishermen. Because of their lifestyle, or because, like Judas Iscariot, because of their rebellion against the government, they were different. They were part, some, of the hypocritical religious leadership. And even Matthew, who was convert, a converted loan shark for the Roman Empire, Simon, called Peter, uh, was known as Simon Barjona. Uh, and, and he was a fisherman. That, that's what he did by trade. There was, there was Andrew, the brother of Peter. Part of John the Baptist. James, John, sons of Jebedee. Uh, that was called the sons of thunder. Philip of Bethesda of Galilee. Not the same Philip with the Ethiopian eunuch, but another Philip. Thaddeus, Judas, the son of James, uh, and Judas, not Judas Iscariot, that's what they called him. Bartholomew, also known as Nathaniel. Thomas, Didymus, we know he was the twin, but we also remember him as Doubting Thomas, right? James, commonly identified with James the Less. We talked about Matthew, the tax collector. Simon the Canaanite, Simon the Zealot, and then Judas Iscariot. Diversity. At a table when all we do is look at a picture and put them all in the same way. <laughs> so they were there from different environments with different thinking about why they were at that table. Some were there because they had become close to Jesus and they were going to be anywhere Jesus was. But others were just going along to get along. Those are the same group of people that were in that boat. When Peter decided he was going to walk on water because he was going to Jesus, they were in there saying, fool, I'm not getting out of this boat. Because we bring the diversity of our environment to our worship and to this table. They also had an open invitation with diverse experiences and personalities. In our lives, we often hear about those people that make one bad decision, that rob them of opportunity. I'm reminded of the runner who uh, was running at, from Dallas that, that someone tell me her name again, Richardson. And, and, and when Shakari Richardson made that mistake, everybody was mad at Shakari. They were mad at her because they had hope in her. And, and each one of us who makes mistakes, the decision robs us of opportunity. It could be a politician, a sports figure, celebrities, you, me. But each mistake teaches us great lessons. We were upset with Miss Richardson because we saw her as a race lifter. You all know what I mean by that? We see some people as just, 
and they're trying to make it just like you. Yeah. They're just trying to make it through. Some people are very talented, but they don't know how to cope with the trauma of their lives. They have diverse life experiences, and they're a part of our community, and each is human, and so were the disciples. They were all chosen, but they had 12 different experiences as disciples. Peter, James, and John, with their very personalities, were in the inner circle. Sons of Thunder, James and John of Zebedee were mama's boys who knew, <laughs> who allowed her to plead for their position. Thomas was in need of proof, just like we are most of the time. Simon and Jude were militants. Andrew, whom the Matthew account identified as the persuasive one who got that child to give up his lunch. Those, those who were unknown, we don't know them. You just heard their name for the very first time. But it didn't make them any less disciples. Jesus loved them on purpose and understood that despite their lack of mention, they were being prepared. Prepared. Each one had problems, but potential. Each were challenged, but were chosen. Each had indignation, but received an inspiration. Each dealt with adversity, but were on assignment. Each faced his anxiety, but maintained anticipatory hope. Just like us. Jesus had invited them to share this experience, one that was different than before. And despite his own human feelings, for his heart knows that even though he has opened his heart up to them, they were about to break it in diverse ways. Don't you know that God, Jesus loves us? Even though Jesus knows when we wake up in the morning how we're going to break his heart today. <laughs> it was an open invitation with that diverse expectations and personality. It was an open invitation with diverse expectations. Each of them had different expectations, though none knew all that they were dealing with. They had listened, but not heard, as many of us do. We, we've been hearing words and stories all our lives. But if you ask us sometimes to tell the story, we'd be like, I remember hearing that name. <laughs> Because we, we heard, but we didn't comprehend. And, and more than not comprehending, we didn't apply. So when, when we hear the word of God, we must not only comprehend, but in order to remember it, we got to make application. It's got to mean something to us. Yet like us, who love the Lord, they each had a desire to understand the reason for their mission. Each thought that it was an earthly kingdom that Jesus spoke of. And each had an idea of how they would fit into that equation. Amen? Peter had divine revelation, not human cognition. He said, Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God. Uh -huh. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. But he still didn't know exactly what it meant. <laughs> Yet this night, it was abundantly clear that their expectations had to change. Church, when we know how we fit into the Lord's plans, our expectations have to change. As long as we're just going along to get along, showing up in church because we're supposed to, singing and ushering and doing all of that, if we're doing all of that and we're just doing it because we're going along to get along, that's what we think we're supposed to be doing. It is absolutely different when we know that we know yeah. what God has called us to do. Yeah. We know how we fit in the Lord's plan. They were called to use the diverse gifts to build the kingdom. Not a society, but souls. Not religion, but relationships. Not government, but grace. Not war, but worship. 
They had expectations that Jesus would fix their lives when he came to fix their hearts. Often we are asking God to fix it. Lord, fix it. Do it for me. Because we want God to change our circumstance. But in the midst of our circumstance, God just wants to change us.
Yes, I am. 